Great, so this is the last uh, lesson for this unit, and um, we're going to be talking about relations and functions. We did something similar yesterday when we graphed relations and functions, um, but today I'm going to actually define the difference between the two. So a function is just a relation that has for every input exactly one output. So it's a relation where for every input there is exactly one output. Okay, so I want you guys to write down this definition because this is the kind of a formal definition, a mathematical definition of it. Now I'm going to go down here and say a relation is just um, a set of ordered pairs. So it doesn't have anything special necessarily about it. So any set of ordered pairs, so like 3, 6, 7, 8, 10, 2, it doesn't really matter. Um, if you were to, to draw this out, since you have x inputs and y outputs, this represents a relation. So a bunch of just points could represent a relation. Okay. So a function is a special type of relation where for every input there's exactly one output. So what I'm going to do is try to explain this in terms of a birthday. Okay, that's why I have this little, you know, little birthday cake here. To try to make this a little bit more of a formal definition for you, so that it makes more sense rather than just mathematical mumbo jumbo. Okay, so I just want to go over really quick and talk about the collection of input values. We are used to calling that the domain. So the domain is your input. The output are your y values. So the range. Okay, and we've used these terms before. Um, and again, so a function just has for every input, there's exactly one output, and two or more, more inputs can have the same, um, oops, that word's not showing, but can have the same output. Okay, so again, this is your technical, you know, mathy definition. I'm going to um, try to break it down so that it makes a little bit more sense, okay? Okay, all right, so I figured you, you guys should meet um, Tank and Walt since they are always making tons of noise in the background. So this is Tank and this is Walt. Um, they're going to help us to explain um, the the term of function in terms of the birthday function, okay? So um, you're going to think of tank and walt as your inputs of a function. So that would be your domain, right? So tank and walt are two separate inputs. Now their outputs, in this case, since it's the birthday function, would be their actual birth date, okay? So I don't know um, tank's, or actually I know tank's birthday because I got him when he was a puppy, but walt, he's adopted, so uh, he doesn't know that. Don't tell him. But I just made up his birthday. So Tank's birthday is on the 28th. Walt's birthday is on April 28th. Okay? And again, I made that up. This represents a function. Your input has exactly one output. So Tank has one output, and that's his birthday on the 28th. Walt has one output, and that's his birthday on April 28th. Now, that's not to say that there could be more than one person with the same birthday, right? Walt and Tank are not born on the same day, but other people can all be born on the same day. So for example, Lady Gaga, Vince Vaughn, and Tank all have the exact same birthday on March 28th, okay? Now, this represents a function still because you have multiple inputs with the same output, that's okay, but Tank cannot have two birthdays. He cannot be born on two separate days, so your input cannot have two different outputs. This would not represent a function. So to, you know, go back to this, Every input has to have exactly one output, okay? More than one input could share the same output, but um, one out input cannot have multiple outputs, so this would be not okay, all right? So that's the idea of a function. So again, this is the more boring idea of it, but you're just finding for every input there's only one output, so each person can have only one birthday. Two or more inputs, though, can have the same output, so two or more people can share the same birthday, okay? All right, so what we're gonna do is start graphing stuff and we're gonna decide whether it's a function or a relation. All right, so let's talk about y squared equals x. So if I make my x, y table, this is your input, this is your output. Let's say I plug in um, negative two for uh, the input. Well, if I square something, will I ever get the number negative two? Nope, that won't work, so I actually can't use negative 2 here. So I'm going to do this backwards again like we did yesterday. I'm going to start instead by picking y values and then figuring out what my x values are. So let's say I plug a y value in of negative 2. This time I get a positive 4, right? I get a positive 4 if I square negative 2. I get a positive 4 for the x value. If I plug in negative 1, 
I get a positive one for the x value. If I plug in 0 for the y, I get 0 for the x. If I plug in a positive 1 for the y, I get a positive 1 for the x. And if I plug in a positive 2 for the, the y, I get a positive 4. So think about this in terms of birthdays. This is like seeing tank twice, right? 4 and 4. This is tank, the same input, having two different birthdays, okay? Or think of this one as Walt. Walt has appearing twice here, and he now has two different birthdays. This is not a function. This would be a relation because you're seeing multiple inputs. Um, I'm sorry, the same input with multiple outputs, right? 4 has an output of negative 2 and 2. That is not okay, all right? So this would not be a function. This would be considered just a relation. But we can still graph this. So when we graph it, we have 4, negative 2, um, and 4, positive 2. We also have 1, negative 1, and uh, 1, 1, and then 0, 0. So we get a parabola, a sideways looking parabola. We still get a parabola here. So this is the graph of a relation. Now our domain, we can look at it based off of our picture, or we could look at our table too. Remember, we couldn't plug in any negative values here. So our, our uh, domain here is going to be x is greater than or equal to 0. And again, you're starting at 0 here, and you're working your way all the way to positive infinity here. For the range, you do not have a low point and a high point because this goes forever to positive and negative infinity. So this is going to be all reals. Okay, let's look at uh, graph 2. So graph 2, um, when I create my xy table here, I again pick values for the, the y. So let's do negative 2 to positive 2. So if I plug that in, I get 2, 1, 0, 1, and 2. And again, I'm seeing, look at this, like as Tank. Tank has two different birthdays. Walt has two different birthdays. That doesn't quite make sense for a function, so this is not a function. Right away, you can tell this is a relation. If I plot these points, 2, negative 2, 2, positive 2, 1, 1, 1, negative 1, and 0, 0, I get an absolute value graph of V-shape that has been um, shifted, okay? So the domain of this function, again, you can look at these x values here. You're noticing that they're all positive or greater than 0, and you can see this also repeated in your picture because you have x values that are all greater than or equal to 0. And your range, I could plug in anything for this range, any number that I want, and I would still get an x value. So this goes to positive infinity, negative infinity. This is all reals. Okay, now a faster way to test whether or not something is a function or a, rel or a relation is called the vertical line test. You might have heard this in Algebra 1, but it's a really simple test. So the vertical line test says that if I pass through a vertical line, so if I create a vertical line anywhere on a graph, if it passes through the function just once, then it's a function. Over here, though, if I create a vertical line, see how I have two of the same um, points that are intersecting this vertical line. This is like having the same x input, right? The x value here is the same. So that x value here is the same as that x value down here. The y coordinate, though, is a different number. These y coordinates here and here are different values. So this is like tank having two different birthdays, OK? So the vertical line test says that if you have, you'll have a function if it only passes through the, that, that function once. It's not a function if it passes through more than once. So in this case here, this would be a relation. And this up here would be a function. And we can go back to our graphs over here. Neither of these, we, we decided both of those, right, were um, relations. Neither of them, if I just draw a vertical line through them, they don't pass the vertical line test because there's two points of intersection, right? Two points of, of intersection for each one of those. No matter where I draw that vertical line, I'll always get two points of intersection. Okay, so this is um, just some pretty easy examples of determining whether or not something is a function and then stating domain and range. So our domain here is, are just the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4. Our range would be, if we write from smallest to largest, negative 3, 0, 4, and then 6. You don't have to write it in smallest to largest, but I like to do it that way. Um, is this a function? All right, so you've got four different people, each with different outputs. So that's like having four different people with four different birthdays. Absolutely, this is a function, okay? This next example, the domain, you have negative one, three. Negative one is repeated, and then a seven, okay? So I'm not rewriting negative one in there. For the range, I have four, negative two, one, and 10. I didn't really write that in the right order, but that's all right. Now, when you're looking at this, you have 
again, this is like Tink having two separate birthdays. This is not a function. That's not okay. That's only a relation then. In this next picture, this is called a mapping, um, where you decide whether or not um, it's a function by looking at the inputs and comparing it to the outputs. So here you've got zero going to just one output and two going to just one output of negative seven. This is like two people, right, having the same birthday. That is okay. You have another person and a different person having two separate birthdays, so this is a function. Now in the second example, you have the point negative one here. Negative one is being mapped to negative three as well as zero. So this is like having two different birthdays for the same person. So this is not a function. This would be called a relation. Okay. The last two examples here are visual. All right. Let's state the domain and the range first and then decide if it's a function or not. So the domain of this function, we are we have a, uh, a left, so you want to think of domain, right, as your walls. I know with my students I always talk about, um, you know, think of the walls caving in. So this is no longer inside your domain, neither is this. So your domain is restricted to only these values here, between negative 4 and positive 7. So when you write that, you're going to put your smallest amount first, then x in the middle, and then 7. Notice I'm using less than or equal to symbols every time. So your symbol should always be facing that direction, like that. They're eating the next value. You can think of it as a fish eating the, eating the fish that comes after it. Um, so make sure you have also the equal to, to sign, because this is a closed circle for both of those. Now for the range, this time, you're shrinking the ceiling and the floor, right? So for the range, you're looking at the low point here and the high point. So you're ignoring all of this is not in the range. We're going from a low point here of negative 7 to a high point of 6. So negative 7 is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to 6 would be the range here. All right, now, is this a function? Well, since this is just a picture of a graph, it's very easy to tell if it's a function or not. We don't have to check every single point. All we're going to do is pass the vertical line test here. So every time I created a line through, a vertical line through there, I only pass through the function one time. So this is a function, okay? You don't have to do multiple ones. You can just scan it and see. You know, if I pass a vertical line anywhere on this point, or on this graph, would it, would it intersect more than once? It doesn't, so that's why it's a function, okay? All right, this next picture, the domain of this next picture, if we shrink our walls on the left side, the wall comes all the way to negative 7, right? But this is showing it's continuing forever and forever going into positive infinity. So that means I have a low end, like a left value for x, but when I move to the right, it doesn't ever end. So that means that x should be greater than or equal to negative 7. All values are going to get greater than or equal to negative 7. For the range of this function, I have a floor, right? The floor is at negative 4. None of this is in there, but there is no ceiling because this keeps going forever and forever. I know it doesn't look like it's going up, but eventually it'll keep increasing forever and forever in the positive y direction. So this has a low point at negative 4 and increases, so y is greater than or equal to negative 4. Now when you ask if this is a function, if this passes the vertical line test, then it's a function. But no matter where you draw your line, you're going to always intersect here twice, except for, oh, I guess over here because it's stopping. But within here, this is not a function. Okay? So this is just a relation. All right, this is the very last lesson for uh, chapters 1 and 2. Woohoo! We're done.